slaves. You wrote the book. Well, it certainly is an issue that we've never settled, and the only response we've been ever able to give about it has been one of anger and hostility. But there are some unresolved issues about it, and what this book does, Are You Still a Slave? It's a test workbook. It's 50 questions, true and false. There are no trick questions, and it's designed to let us find out if we are practicing slavery, self-induced now, since we no longer have a slave master, without, you know, any outside intervention. If we are still doing the things that we did in slavery that uh, impact upon our lifestyle today. You said a couple of things, and you feel free to jump right in. The first thing you say is, we've never resolved it. When you no, say we, we, the black community, the black-white community, America, the world... Well, that's part of it not being resolved. We keep expecting, you know, something because we experienced that trauma, because our ancestors experienced that trauma. We want some sympathy. Uh, we want the 40 acres and a mule. Uh, we want some kind of therapy. We want something for it, and we've never even really gotten any recognition for it. It's unresolved between us because it represents so much pain that it makes us embarrassed, it makes us ashamed about it, and so we would rather fluff it over and repress it and say forget about it. But that history still lives in us. And while we can say that biological traits are transmitted through regular heredity, cultural ideas are also transmitted. And right now, we are living with many of those slavery ideas that we have never resolved. And we don't need a slave master. It's like a self-induced post-hypnotic trance we're in. Uh, we're doing it when on our own When you say slavery now. ideas, and mm -hmm. remember this is a conversation sure. here, we can jump it. <clears throat> when you say slavery ideas, what do you mean? Well, I mean, a lot of the decisions that we make, a lot of the attitudes we have Give me an example. are very routine and moderate or acceptable. Uh, actually are rooted in slavery. Uh, ideas we ha might have about, uh, say, funerals. There's one. There's a question in the book about the purpose of funerals and why we attend them. Mm -hmm. And most of us would say, yes, we do attend them to pay homage to the dead mm -hmm. and to support the families and so forth. But that isn't really how the funeral idea started. Uh, the funerals of laying the body out in the casket. When we came, when our people came over here on the ships, uh, any slave who was just more rebellious than the others, they might be used as an example. And so they might beat that slave every day, two or three days, and make the other slaves, when they came up above deck for air and water, to watch them, to see this beating in order to strike terror in their hearts, to put fear in them. And then when that slave finally died, they would cut the head off of the slave, perhaps put it on a stick or a barrel, and then make all of the other slaves march past it and kiss well, what that What does that head. have to do with burial, though? Because the burial rites trace back all the way to well, Africa. Well, I'm dealing with the and funeral. Let me say funeral. Okay, instead but of the burial. funeral okay, procession mm -hmm. dates all the and they're, they're not the funeral procession that we do here in America. That came from slavery, where we walk past the casket in single file, even if the casket is closed, we march past it. And you're Many saying that if still kiss, but, but you're saying if we, we walk past the casket in single file to look at a person who is dead or a slave? Well, it came from a process well, that started on the ship. Yes, I am saying that. It came from mm -hmm. being on the ship. Well, part of the difficulty, I think, of uh, talking ahead. about the consequences of slavery is that you have to have many levels. I think uh, Ms. Ali is exactly right to talk about the consequences of slavery on our contemporary culture. I wouldn't want to necessarily trace them to a one-to-one -one correspondence. What we did in Africa or what we did not do in Africa, what we did in America as a result of enslavement then being correspondingly related to practices we do now because there's so many influences that are mongrelized that are uh, that, that are, that's what this right? book just shows. Together. It shows the correlation. It shows that the things that we did then, the attitudes we had and the things that traumatized us so much psychologically and emotionally, we are still doing those things. Now let me tell you, the slave master understood the impact and the effect of trauma, mm -hmm. which is why if they beat a man or burned him or hung him, they would make all of the other slaves come out and watch it. They would even put the little baby on the ground below the man hanging mm -hmm. because they knew if they could make a, a genetic impact sure. of terror on the brain so of that black person that we would carry that, that into the future. Right. And and that's and, what it just shows. And, so and, and, and have a lot of things that have this. not been settled. What we have to do uh, today is understand that we have gone from pyramid builders to project dwellers. And we have to look at our condition in America and ask ourselves, uh, are we really all that we claim to be and are we that which we should be? And if our actions would be approved by our enemy, if our actions would be sanctioned and condoned by our enemy, then we have to seriously question ourselves of whether we are really fulfilling our duty to the community or are we acting as a slave. Most of our problems stem from the black holocaust in slavery, uh, the drugs, the homosexuality, the immorality. The problems that we have today were created here in America. God made the black man and the black woman and the white man made niggas. So this is what we have to think about as we engage in this discussion. Well, part of the thing is, you see, the problem I have with, see, if we use slave as a metaphor, if we're using it as a, as a which I think oh you're doing, you're talking about metaphorically, that is, we're slave if we're, 
we are uh, subject to a condition over which we claim to have no control. That is, we don't have any individual no, will or I'm autonomy. Saying well, you know, I'm I, saying, I, 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 well, let me finish. My point is this, though. My point is that when we talk, the, the problem I have with, with talking about the continuing effects of slavery is that what happens is that black folk end up talking about the indexes of slavery with one another, judging them based upon their own uh, preferences. So that if I prefer to have an African name versus a so-called Christian name, or if I prefer to follow yeah, Christianity... Yeah, that does make you a slave, because right. that's not your name. Right. You never find but a Jew that name a child Adolf Hitler. Right, no, that's so the So why then are we naming our black but, children names after the white but people that have enslaved But there are a variety, <laughs> variety of choices. Let me finish my point. Though. My point is this is that your personal preferences are indexed as, an, uh, as a way of... Oh, what, no. Let me finish. As yes, a way of sir. saying somebody's a slave or not. So that we, we can have debates about whether if I'm a I Christian this or up. not. This is eight pages of bibliography right. starting at about 1560. Well, let me make my point. My point is this, is that when we get into notions, I think part of this is the quest for purity. There's no such thing as regressing back to a pure state of Africanity. There's no such thing. No, let me finish. Like so I think that, that part of what we're dealing with is that we are dealing with the intersection of different realities and identities of constituting what it means to be black. Paul Gilroy in his book, uh, his recently published book talks about the transatlantic experience. That is, we're neither West Indian altogether, we're neither North American altogether, we're neither British altogether or African American. We're all those things together. Well, what this so are we you talk still about a slave addresses there? We are, and then you, bad. brother. What this addresses is that we have never received any therapy or any debriefing. And I mentioned the Iranian hostages before. Right, of the 440 right. days, the trauma that they experienced in mm -hmm. 1979, many of them are still, are still in therapy. So I said, if they are still in therapy sure. for something that happened, 10 or 15 years ago, then what must we experience after being enslaved for 440 years no as opposed to 440 days? And in therapy, what you right. mentioned, the first thing the therapist has to do is to take the patient back to the trauma and build from there. You can't fluff that over and act like it didn't happen. And then the therapist has to teach the patient to forgive themselves. But I'm not saying that therapy is so not... We can't, it, we can't omit that. that. And we have to go back to that. But get the, that straight, get it settled, post and then move forward. Post-traumatic syndrome is, a, is, a, is an American term. It's not an African term. Right. Therapeutic intervention... That's the experience we are having. We have to right. use the language we speak in the day, brother. What language you want to well, talk? No, no, no. I mean, by the same, by the same, let me jump in here at some right, point. Right. By the same token, when you talk about that, we right. have names, we have American names. Well, um, the reality is, what are we going to call ourselves? Well, that's what this book but, is about. You don't know that. The, the reality, reality, hold on, hold on. The, right. the, the other reality, the other reality, I read Somebody your... get off the ship named Daryl. What's your name? But you just but said I read your book. I read your book. And, and, and in terms of reading your book, it's confusing. 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 It's some of the questions that you ask in the book, they're very subjective. You must have failed it's the test. Oh, my God. No, I didn't fail your test. I don't want to test. It's very subjective. Right. It's subjective, and it's a matter, and it's based on your interpretation of what's being you said there. So what, is, what are you saying does. here? What the failure does mm. is You set this process up for people to, to, to answer these questions. Right. And, you say, and then I give you, you say, the root of the idea. And you say, so you parts of the questions, 31 through... Through, what, Don't what, give 15, that away on the air, brother. Is, Don't is, do that. Is, Don't do that. Don't do that. And, 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 Let us talk and about in terms of setting that process up, hardcore pure butter slave. But, 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 but in terms of setting that process up, what you what you do that is subjective. That is your process for setting it up. And that doesn't it's mean that people have to buy into that. I researched the information. No, but what he's talking about, let me see if I can yes. help out here. Mm. And then we'll let you in, and then we'll let you in, because sure. this is good this morning. But we want to learn. The purpose is to learn. I think yes. it's very important for us to talk about the impact of slavery, mm -hmm. what it has done, sure. and how we can get over it. And that's what we want to do. But when you raise a question like you have a question in the in the book. You don't want me to talk about the yeah, question. You can talk a few questions. I Thank just you for giving you me the permission. Okay. okay. You talk about if you tell a joke, if a white person tells a joke and the joke is not racist, not and mm -hmm. if you laugh, you're a slave. Well, what if it's funny? I mean, what if it's just well, a joke? I think period. That that's an old habit, as I said, of us being forced to laugh at the slave master's joke. But you don't laugh at anything that's not funny. Uh, right, exactly. Yes, we do. We laugh if we think it'll get us some points well, with a person. Well, I would not laugh if it will hurt our feelings. I think, I think that's a wrong perception like that. that you have in, in terms I, of I, that. We do, that, we do that laugh is, at things like that. When we think about reading those questions, we particularly a lot of times when we see white people, we burst into a grin. They don't have to say nothing. Just look at us, and we start smiling all 52 teeth. Okay, before we get to behavior, maybe what we ought to do is define what is a slave mentality today. How well, we I, see I gave a, uh, Let's take a break. Okay. And when we come back, everyone will tell you. You can depend on that. What a slave mentality is right after this. Now